at least for me and my uh, family, my parents, I think for my parents, the biggest investment they ever made was in my education. And I guess that holds true for most of us. That's the biggest investment we do. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how your relationships impact your financial independence. And what better place to talk about that than this beautiful city of Amsterdam and uh, the country of Netherlands where personally, many of my relationships were forged, friends, colleagues, even with my wife for that matter. Um, before I talk to you about this topic, a quick introduction about myself. My name is Yogi and uh, my wife and I achieved financial independence and we retired early before the age of 50. Right now we are in, uh, on this uh, one year of world trip and here I am in uh, Amsterdam as part of that. Going back to the topic. So the five relationships that are going to have a big impact, a positive one or a negative one onto your financial independence are your wife, your husband, your spouse, your partner, the second one being your children, the third being your parents, the fourth being your friends, and the fifth being your colleagues. So these are the most important relationships that probably all of us will ever have in our lives. So to start with our spouse or our partner, this is the most important relationship that we have. And on, interestingly, I don't think this is just a relationship. This is the biggest investment we do. Um, it's much bigger than as an investment than our house, our, um, you know, big uh, uh, stock plans or investment accounts or whatever you name it. Um, and interestingly, many times, uh, especially I would say the movies make it all about love at first sight. I don't think we have that love at first sight with our financial instruments. And I know that uh, a par life partner is not a financial investment, but it does uh, it can either catapult you to your financial independence or probably hold you back. And uh, what I mean by holding you back is that, you know, I've also had uh, many of my, uh, few of my, I would say not many fortunately, but few of my friends or family who've gone through separations or divorces and it uh, kind of, you know, cuts their financial independence journey into half or actually you know everything gets divided into half anyways and it, it kind of doubles the time towards the financial independence and yes um, you know marriages or partnerships uh, they take their own courses but um, what I believe and what I think is uh, super important at least has been in my journey to financial independence is the the amazing alignment that uh, Seema and I have always had when it comes to uh, our priorities in life, our goals in life, uh, including the level of transparency we've had in terms of our, um, the various investments that we do, how and where our investments and the bank accounts and everything is, uh, you know, divided. And uh, this is super important. I've seen just in during the time of COVID where uh, two of very close uh, uh, people within the friends and family unfortunately passed away and I could really see their spouses struggle uh, just to get a grip of all the financial aspects of their lives. Um, and they both come from very different walks of life, one being super modern, super, um, I would say, well off, while the other being um, from a much more of a conservative mindset or from a conservative family, I would say. And both of them had equal amount of struggle. Um, so this was just on, let's say, on the, the, the negative side. But on the positive side, if you are aligned with your partner, it can really help you to say that, okay, these are the goals, that this is how my career will progress. This is how we are going to make sure that we are investing for our future rather than just investing for what I call keeping up with the Jonases as this American phrase goes. And I will talk to you about that in a minute when I talk to about family, friends and colleagues uh, for that matter. So the key question you need to ask yourself in terms of your um, spousal relationship or your life partner is that A, 
Are you both super aligned when it comes to your investments? Are you aligned to your priorities? Are you aligned to the fact that you would like to someday retire early maybe? And on that point, I would like to mention that um, many people say, hey, if you retire early, we both will probably drive each other up the wall. Um, that also probably shows whoever makes that comment their own um, relationship that if you are um, you know, holding yourself back from retiring early, just because of the fact that you'll drive each other up the wall, that means that you've probably not got that level of companionship. So that's the question that you need to ask yourself, that are you both aligned in terms of being the companion for each other? So this is about, uh, let's say, the life partner or the spouse. The second most important relationship you will ever have in your life is uh, your children, and rightfully so. And how, um, let's say, the, the relationship with the children and how you bring up your children can impact your financial independence is tremendous. Um, at least for me and my uh, family, my parents, I think for my parents, the biggest investment they ever made was in my education. And I guess that holds true for most of us. That's the biggest investment we do. Um, having said that, what you also need to keep in mind is that, look, um, like there are many people in the world right now who are going with this philosophy that is die with zero, where they are saying, hey, I'm going to leave very little for my, my children just to keep them secure, but the rest is all investing in their education. And what I see, at least within my family and even some of the friends, that they are bringing up their children with that same mindset that, look, we are going to make sure that we give you good education, good upbringing, and then the rest is all up to you. And again, there is no right or wrong answer. It could be that you, you would like to really not just bring, uh, give your children good education, you would like to also make sure that you get them married, you get them a house, you get them all the luxuries of life that you ever desired yourself. Um, but then again, you have to balance it and say, hey, how much of that is part of my financial independence versus what I would like to make sure that my children stand on their own feet. So that's the second relationship that you need to evaluate very carefully and plan for that. The third relationship is with your parents and siblings. As they say that, look, um, you can build all your relationships in life, but something that you get, you know, you, you can't select is your parents and siblings because that just comes to you. Now, that again is something which is, I would say, an important part of our uh, relationships that we have and it also has a positive or a negative impact on our uh, financial independence uh, especially as you are aging your parents are also aging your siblings are also in aging you would like to make sure that you're taking care of them them you're you're at the same time you're building uh, let's say security for their own health, uh, uh, health for that matter so those are the things that you have to start planning like you plan probably in your Excel sheets uh, when it comes to your investments. So early on, if you're in the age of 20 and 30, you need to start thinking already that, hey, what is the uh, contributions that I need to make towards my parents at certain age and how do I make sure that I'm building towards that, be it through proper insurance plans, be it through proper pension plans that you're helping them and building them contribute to, towards that. Because the last thing you want to do is that probably when you think you've achieved financial independence and then you realize that um, for your parents, you suddenly have to make some emergency funds available, which could have on hindsight, 10 years back, had you done the proper health insurances, proper pension plans, it could have been easy. So those are the things that you need to take care of when it comes to your relationships with and for your parents and siblings. The fourth relationship that you'll need to think about is with your friends because this is one of the group or circle that is solely upon you and your discretion that how, what is that sphere of influence that you build. And I think we don't realize it, but how implicitly and subconsciously our set of friends impact our financial independence. And that could be on one side, um, what I would say, as the American phrase goes, keeping up with the Jonases or keeping up appearances, I would say, where you end up into this competition 
with your friends that who's got a better car, who's got a better watch, who's got a better house, better yacht, etc. That's the thing that you need to ask yourself that within your friends, is that something that is uh, now coming up or becoming an issue? Competition or healthy competition within friends, group of friends is very good and very healthy, I would say. Uh, for example, with my friends, if I evaluate myself, well, or even better when it comes to general knowledge, I would say the jury is out when it comes to the sense of humor. Probably some of them have better sense of humor than me, but I think I, I, I also pride myself for my own sense of humor. Uh, probably on the health side, I could do much better, I would say. I, my, my friends have a much better health. Uh, and um, these are the things that we compete about. I don't think, and this is something which I feel very good, and it has definitely added to my own financial independence. We've never competed about who's got a better car, who's got a better watch, who's got a better house. And that has definitely helped me to uh, make sure that I'm making the right decisions when it comes to within my social circle. So those are the things that you need to ask yourself when it comes to selecting your friends, that within this friends group of friends, are they adding the right competition, the right inspiration, or is that something that is uh, uh, taking and putting your money in the wrong direction? The last but not the least is the colleagues uh, or a relationship with colleagues. Interestingly, we spend the most amount of our adult time with our work, uh, co-workers and colleagues. We spend, I would say, least amount of time during that, uh, our working life with probably our parents and friends or even uh, kids than what we spend uh, with our colleagues because you're probably from nine to five, you're interacting with them. So again, subconsciously, that is impacting how you're thinking towards your financial goals and independence. A couple of examples I've always, or anecdotes that when I've been in uh, business uh, situations I've had is that, look, um, there is this whole, especially in this male testosterone environment, um, this thing that, hey, who's worked the late uh, hardest that someone just showing off that, hey, I only slept four hours, I slept five hours for that matter. So there's so many of these things that uh, um, the colleagues um, can either um, put you in the wrong direction when it comes to your work-life balance, but also your investment uh, mindset. On the other hand, if you have the right set of co-workers and your, your colleagues, they can help you inspire and to say, hey, this is how I'm going to make sure that this is how much I'm going to spend time in my uh, family. This is the time I'm spending with my colleagues. This is what I'm learning from their investment strategy. This is what I'm, um, you know, you, and also you need to find a trusted peer set because those are the people who are who you who know that this is from a career perspective but also from a financial investment portfolio perspective those are the people who are doing such uh, activities so you need to ask yourself that are you surrounded with the colleagues who are creating an environment where you're just it's about work 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 and harder work and showing off about that and probably you know, who can drink more and who can pass out and show off the next day that, hey, this yesterday night I had this epic hangover. Or are you surrounded with a few who you can even have the trusted conversation saying, hey, this is what my portfolio is. This is what my strategy is. What is your portfolio? What is your strategy? What's your, um, you know, uh, investment distribution? What's your plan um, for retiring early? If retiring early, if not retiring early, how do you plan to use your pension? Um, how are you optimizing your taxes? Are there places that you would like to evaluate for, you know, uh, reducing your high cost of living to change your location and change your strategy? So in summary, um, my view is um, that, look, we spend a lot of our times um, in an Excel sheet plotting our investment strategy or investment portfolio and say, hey, these many dollars I'm getting as a passive income from my rental income, these many dollars I'm getting from dividends, etc. But we do not plot our relationships enough on an Excel sheet or on a Word document and say, hey, how is my relationship evolving? And how is that relationship evolution helping me grow as a person and also achieve financial independence? So my sincere request to you would be that if you really would like to achieve financial independence or even accelerate that path, 
evaluate these five relationships and see are they adding to your your financial independence and your personal growth or are they becoming an obstacle and if they are becoming an obstacle what are the actions you're doing and if they are adding what are the actions you're doing to keep them in that portfolio so so much for now i hope you um, uh, like this video and if there are any comments if you have any reactions please do give uh, your comments uh, on the video below and i would love to hear your thoughts thanks a lot bye bye